Shalom. I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakradash, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. As we can see here in the photo that I have queued up, brothers, our power, our Lord, he's likened unto the great director. He's a producer. He's the writer of the show we call Life. You know, also to, to, to complement this lesson, <laughs> actually, the photo inspired the lesson. You know, this brother here, he has skin like bronze and hair like wool. As we know by way of the scripture, this is how our Lord looks. All right. But nevertheless, let's jump right into this lesson, because what we're going to understand here and comprehend by way of the Holy Spirit is our Lord is, control, is in control of all things. OK, even our very lives and every step that we take, every move, every thought, even our actions are controlled by the Lord. We're just playing out our part in his movie. Let's get this first precept here. John chapter 1 verse 3. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Let's go from there to Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. For in him all things were created. Things in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. See, first you have to have that understanding that the Lord, Yahweh Shai, he created all things. Matter of fact, the Elohim, him and the angels, all things were created through them. All right. Let's go from there. OK. Let's get Ecclesiastes. Chapter 39, verses 28 through 31. Because what we have to understand, the more we grow in this knowledge and this truth is, the Lord has righteous angels, and the Lord has wicked angels. He, con he controls both sides of the chessboard. All right? He's directing and redirecting this entire movie. He has his cast members, and also he has the good guys and the bad guys as well. Let's get right into this precept here. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. We just read in the previous precepts that the Lord created all things. Now, you may think the Lord hasn't created evil spirits, but what did the scriptures say? There be spirits created for vengeance. Then the scriptures there say the Lord created all things, which in their fury lay on soul strokes. In the time of their destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Who's the him that made them? Right? That's the Lord. Right? Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for what? Vengeance. Okay? When the Lord wants something wicked and or evil done, he will allow that angel to wreak havoc, cause a storm. Remember when Peter um, uh, um, tried to rebuke the Lord? The Lord said, why has Satan entered your heart? See, anytime the Lord wants something done, he has an evil demonic demon on standby to take care of his affairs for him. Even when Satan appeared in the book of Job, he said, where have you come from? Remember, Satan said he was, he was traveling up and down to and fro, wreaking havoc on the earth. That's his job. He's the Lord's professional hint, hint man. All right. And pardon me for the babbling, brothers. Let me get right back to the scripture here. Fire and hail and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions serpents and the sword which is the, today the gun to punish the wicked to destruction they shall rejoice in his commandment see these evil demons they rejoice in the commandment that the lord gives them the lord put a hit out on a person a person gets deleted a person gets sent back to the spiritual realm they rejoice at it they say yes lord i will do it immediately all right I'm going to read that again. They rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon the earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. See, this kind of low key deals with the theory of fallen angels. There aren't any fallen angels. We just we just gain this understanding right now. As a matter of fact, let me go here. Right. Let me go here to Sirach chapter 16, verses 26 through 28, right? The Lord, <clears throat> pardon me, the works of the Lord have existed from the beginning of his creation. 
And when he made them, he determined their divisions. He arranged his works in an internal order and their dominion for all generations. They neither hunger nor grow weary. Who's he talking about growing hunger or grow weary? He's talking about the righteous angels and the wicked angels. Remember, angelic beings, they neither hunger nor grow weary. What else does it say here? And they do not cease from their labors. The angels are working around the clock. What else don't they do? They do, they do not crowd one another aside. They don't even get in each other's way. They don't fight each other because they both have the same boss, to put it in layman's turn, right? And they never disobey his word. See, you Christians have to understand that the devil is not in a fight with our Lord. Our Lord controls both sides of the table, right? He's the great director. He's the master chess player, all right? Let's get some more. Let's go from here. Pardon me, brothers. I didn't mean to press that, but let me come up here. Let's get a better understanding of our Lord. That's why the scriptures say, my people are foolish. They have not known me. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7, but it reads, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things, right? You have to get that understanding in your head, man. Even me, when things go on in my life, I have to understand this verse right here. Ecclesiasticus chapter 11, verse 14. Prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches. Come of who? Come of the Lord, meaning he makes it happen. Okay? Like in the book of Job, he stated to his wife, shall we accept good from the Lord and not what? Evil? The other precept that came in my mind in the book of Amos. Shall that be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? See? Man, it's like when well, you understand that the Lord controls it all, you know, you have no other choice but to serve him. Even if you don't want to serve him, <laughs> you're going to serve him by happenstance. He's in control of all things, right? <clears throat> How do we know? Let's get further. Let's further substantiate our point. Let's come down to Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. And it reads, and it reads, the, the king's heart is like a stream of, of water directed by the Lord, which is his name is Shehawah. He guides it whatever way he pleases. See, the Lord's in control of your heart, meaning your mind, right? Let me, let me come back out of this. Let me come out of this. Um, another precept I had pulled up for you, brothers. Uh... A precept comes to mind. Pardon me, brothers. It, it reads, um, there it is right there. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man understand his own way? See, your heart is in his hands, right? I like what the New King James Version says. A man's steps are of the Lord. How can a man understand his own way, right? So you're going to go and do exactly what the Lord put in your mind to do. You have no free will. The Lord controls us like Pinocchio. He's like Strapetto. Okay. Let's come out of this. Right. Let's go um, let's further substantiate our point. A few more precepts here, brothers. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4. Let's get, let's come down to the King James Bible version. The Lord has made all things for himself. Yea, even the wicked for the day of what? Evil. Again, it goes back to the Lord. He created all things to serve him, whether it be good or evil. The Lord controls your mind. The Lord controls your steps. The Lord controls your thoughts. Right? He's the great director, man. <laughs> He's the great director. Let's get Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. See now that I, myself, am he. Our Lord's name is Yahweh, for he exists. He is. We'll read that again. See, now that I myself am he, there is no God beside me. I put to death and I bring the life. I, I have wounded and I will heal. And no one can deliver out of my hand. So you Christians have to understand the duality of the Lord. Right? Again, it goes back to that precept that I stated previously. He said, my people are foolish and they have not known me. Once you understand the Lord controls it all, right? And with, with the proper understanding, when you say, 
because I've, you know, you heard Christians in, 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 in for years <laughs> in the Christian church saying, hey, God is still on the throne. The Lord is in control. But if you really understood the control that he has, and even me at times, I have to remind myself of that. No, literally, the Lord is in control. He controls both sides of the chessboard. Let's wrap up here. A few more precepts, right? For you Christians, I, brought, I wanted to pull this up for you name it and claim it Christians. But that's something big that always has been uh, paramount in the Christian church. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse um, 37, and it reads, Who is he that said, and it cometh to pass when the Lord commandeth it not? You can't name and claim anything, okay? <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Right? Lamentations chapter 3 verse 38. Out of the mouth of the Most High proceeded not good and evil. See? Let me get, let me get a few more here. Let's wrap up. Because I, I know I'm pretty sure I made the point. Hold on, brothers. Um, bear with me one second. Even in the end times. This is, this is referring to future prophecy. Revelation chapter 17 verse 17. This goes to show you that the Lord controls the hearts of men, of kings, of, of the rulers of nations, right? For Yahweh has put it into their hearts to accomplish his purpose by agreeing to hand over to the beast their royal authority until Yahweh's words are fulfilled. I want to go back to something. The scripture states that for Yahweh has put it into their hearts, meaning their minds, right? These men... When this prophecy comes to pass, I think they're going to be doing their own will, but they're going to be doing the will of the heavenly father and his son, right? To bring judgment on themselves. Let me close out with this precept here, brothers. Um, let me go here to the book of James. This is the mind state that we ought to have, right? James chapter four, verse 13 through 15. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we'll go to this city, spend a year there carry on business and make money Don't we make plans all the time right why you don't even know what will happen tomorrow what is your life you are a mist that appears for a little while then vanishes here's the kicker here instead you ought to say if it's the lord's will we will live and do this or do that see the lord is the great director okay you have to get that in your mind that he controls all things. Life, death, sickness, health, riches, poverty, anguish, pain. It's all in his hands. You know? So if you made it through this entire lesson, it would behoove us to fear the Lord and to serve him, to seek him ten times more. Shalom.